the author of Alabama Moon, Watt Key, and the producers, Kenny McLean and Lee Faulkner. two cameras. Um, we used a new system called Genesis. It was HD with Panavision equipment. And uh, because we're using kids, it cut our time down by shooting two cameras at the same time. Thank you. But the quality is beautiful, though. Yes, yes ma'am. Please explain the inspiration for Pat. Was that a conglomeration of a few different individuals or what? <laughs> um, Pap, the, Pap was a sort of a secondary character. My original uh, intention was to write a story about a boy who was raised in the wild and who had to be uh, put back in society and the adventures that it would entail. And I had to figure out how that could happen. So. I told the last group the first thing I did was kill the mother real early. <laughs> and, uh, and then the uh, second thing I had to do was make the dad crazy. And so I had to think about how that would happen. And based on the time setting, I figured, you know, in the, in the 80s, the kid was about 10 years old. The dad, you know, would have, could have been in the Vietnam War in the late 60s. And uh, so I just made him a shell shock Vietnam vet. And uh, that was the basis of the dad being crazy. So that's kind of how I came up with that. Thank you. Where was it filmed? It's in <coughs> Covington, uh, Mandeville, and New Orleans area oh, really in Louisiana. Cool. We had to, we were going to call it Louisiana Moon. <laughs> we say we better not because we're all from Alabama. <laughs> they have tax credits in Louisiana, so. You, you, it was prior to them passing the uh, uh, incentive package in Alabama, so we uh, made it over there. How long did it take to make the film? Six weeks. Well, actually, it's it's like, kind of like a four-year deal. Uh, I read the book, and I've known Lee for 30 years, and. Uh, he came down for a visit, and I said, Lee, you got to read this book. He read it on the way home on the airplane, and uh, he said, boy, I like that. I said, well, can you get a script put together? <coughs> yeah, let's go to work. So it was over a period of about three and a half years, uh, and, and, but it took six weeks to, yeah, to, to actually film it. Will there be a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you love that. There might be a sequel. <laughs> Is it good enough to have a sequel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. Uh, come right back to you. Uh, almost the same question. Is Dirt Road Home planned to become a second movie? They had, yeah, kind of the same questions the last group asked. Uh, yeah, but a sequel, but it's not yeah. exactly. The right. Uh, not, at, not at this time. Kid movies are hard to make. I'm sure these guys are pretty worn out right now. And, you know, <laughs> Dirt Road Home all takes place, or most of it takes place in a, in a pretty bad juvenile facility. And these guys will attest to it. Those are pretty rough places to film in. And um, so, I don't know, maybe, maybe another one, but maybe, maybe not that one right now. Sir. Yes, I have another book on the way. Yes, sir. I have three questions. Uh, one, was that really those constables' tea, or was that makeup? <laughs> God, I hope that was makeup for that poor guy. I, I don't know. I think uh, Clint actually oh, told those me. Are those are his Oh, man. <laughs> we, Golly, that's, that's too bad. Well, when he uh, first, uh, I remember when, he, when I first met, I met him on the set, and he told me he really liked playing that part because he could chew tobacco, and he really liked to chew. He already chewed tobacco. <laughs> And so, <laughs> I, that's probably where his teeth. Well, nothing like casting, huh? Uh, number two, you know, I th I thought Eleven was a little young for that character. 
I mean, he's pretty smart 11-year-old. Yeah. I mean, acted more like a 14-year-old, my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've gotten that criticism. In the book, he's actually 10. So, uh, so That's one yeah, of the smartest 10-year-olds I've, I've gotten that uh, criticism before. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, people have brought that up. And uh, now this is coming from way out in left field, okay? This one's really nuts. Um, the tragic figure of Kit. It reminded me of the Elephant Man, actually. And I'll tell you why. Okay, hear me out. You know, he, the Elephant Man, when he laid down the last time, he knew he was going to die. You remember that in the movie? Well, Kit going out there actually knew he was going to die, too. And, I, yeah, I mean, I just see an analogy there, that's all. Well, I've not gotten that. Uh, yeah, that's, like I said, that, that was out in left field. Yeah, I see it. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. You said you were all from Alabama. Are y'all all from LA? Lower Alabama? All of you? Well, what now are? He's from Tuscaloosa originally. <laughs> yeah, Kenny and I grew up across the bay. Anybody else? Did you always wanted to be a police officer? <laughs> well, you know, I thought about it, so I kind of got a chance to do it. It's funny how that happened. The uniform, he was supposed to be the police officer. Well, he was in charge of wardrobe, too, so he ordered a uniform, didn't fit him, it just happened to fit me. <laughs> that's how I got to be You've been around more of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. So whose house was that in Fairhope in the very end? That was in uh, that was in Mandeville. Oh really? Oh, okay. Where was the where was the shot in Fairhope? <coughs> Nowhere. No, it no. was just no. help from the town of Fairhope. Right, right, right. Who was the judge? A guy Grubbs. named Gary Grubbs. He's from Mississippi. He's been in a lot of a lot of movies. I'm sure you've all seen him. Really a nice guy. I think he lives up in Oxford or somewhere. Has legislation been passed so that maybe the next one could be filmed in Alabama? It has. It has. Got to tweak it a little bit, but but uh, we're working on it. But it has been passed. Yes, ma'am. Most of the Uh, well, I've, I've, I'll probably, uh, I've got a couple of adult books I'm working on, but right now I'm getting paid to do young adult books. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, adult books is kind of a different thing, and, and uh, you know, I enjoy doing them, so I don't know, I'll do whatever I can make a living at doing. Uh, <coughs> yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask you, um, this was in an orphanage, and then you say your current book is a juvenile facility. Is that from personal experience? Or no. I was just curious uh, if, if that was just a happenstance, or if you had some. No, uh, I've never, I've never been in a juvenile home. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I started to write the second book, I had absolutely no idea how I was gonna. I kind of like the woods and that kind of thing, so I, I was. I, I was kind of tuned into the Alabama Moon, but when it came to write about the juvenile home, I actually had to go to the landfill and make a friend with a convict, and uh, over at the Loxley landfill, and um, we kind of corresponded, and he, he was doing a life term, and uh, for manslaughter, so it like wasn't the kind of thing where I thought he was going to kill me, but it was still a life term, so it was a pretty good deal for me, and uh, so I, I worked with him on it, but no, I have not. I was really being facetious, but I, I yeah. was curious that both of them. Well, they both take a lot of research, but. Yeah. One more question: From when you wrote the book to the screenplay, were you pleased with that? Was it? Did you have any input as far as how that's not what I meant or that type of thing? Uh, yeah, I actually had a lot of input. They, uh, Lee and Kenny, had someone else write the original screenplay, and then um, they gave it to me to look at, and we all decided that. Uh, we could work on a little bit more so they, 
let me get involved with it on the second run. And um, I did another version, and that's the one that uh, we took to uh, start filming with. So you actually tweaked the script? That's correct. And then there were really three people involved. There was the first screenwriter, then there was me, and then they start filming. And once they start filming, the director um, also makes his changes um, to it as they're filming. So there were really three people on the screenplay. We have time for a couple more questions if you have them. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, who are some of your favorite authors? Me? I get that question a lot. It's a really hard question because I'm always reading a lot of different stuff. But, uh, like, uh, I read just a lot of true adventure type books. Uh, a lot, the older I get, I read a lot more nonfiction. I'm reading a book about Custer right now that, um, that I just picked up. Uh, for fiction, though, I, usually older Southern stuff, uh, Cormac McCarthy and Harry Cruz and um, Larry Brown, um, you know, Southern writers. Some of the younger books are, of course, Where the Red Fern Grows and uh, Education of Little Tree, some of those kind of things, Southern type stuff. One more. What? Maybe two. Go ahead, son. What you think of book? My favorite book? My most favorite book that I haven't written, I usually say Where the Red Fern Grows. That seems to be a pretty standard answer for me, so maybe that's it. One more, and we'll say goodnight to our what, guests. What was your uh, time frame from writing the book to getting it published? What was the story behind that? Um, well, Alabama Man was my first published book, and I was I was working on other books at the same time, but I got it. I sold it in 2004. It came out in 2006, and I was probably working on it in the late. Uh, probably from 2000 to 2004, along with a couple other books. Probably about 500 hours in it, if you, broke, if you boiled it down to just hours. I'd like to thank you all for coming, and I'd like to thank our guests. For